Hallelujah. Uh, I'm very excited to come and speak to you again in, in our uh, 69th program. On, and we're going to speak and continue speaking on uh, in discernment. And so let's pray and ask the Holy Spirit to, to come and lead us as God wants to teach us just to be ready for end time discernment because he wants to restore the gospel in these last days. Father, we thank you so much for what you want to do in this program, Father. I pray that your presence will begin to touch people even right now as I speak, Father. Lord, it's not what I say, but it is what you will say in their hearts. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will speak to people, that you will touch people, Father, in a supernatural way. Father, I pray that people will become stronger in really discerning the truth by your Spirit in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, we, we pray, Father, for a pure spirit, the spirit of purity, the spirit of holiness, Father, that will come and flow through us. Send us the spirit of truth that you said you will send us, Father, so that we can be guided and be led into all truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, this, today I want to speak about, does the church need restoration? I really believe that uh, there's going to be an end time restoration of the power of the gospel in these last days. And so in two weeks time, or maybe three weeks time on the, between the 4th and the 6th of November, I'm going to be presenting a end time prophetic overcomers conference that's really going to help us to prepare for what I believe is coming in the future. And one of the things that's very important to really consider, which I believe is needed before Jesus can return, is the restoration of the power of the gospel in the last days. Just listen to this verse in Isaiah 58 verse 11. And the Lord shall guide you continually and satisfy you in drought and in dry places and make strong your bones and you shall be like a well-watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt, and you shall raise up the foundations of the buildings that have been laid waste for many generations. And you shall be called repairer of the breach, restorer of streets to dwell in. So the prophet Isaiah prophesied about Something where he says that there's going to be a restoration that's going to take place where what he calls the ancient ruins are going to be rebuilt. And so what is this ancient ruins? And he says they will raise up the former foundations. So I believe personally, you know, we are 2,000 years now after Jesus came and brought the gospel to us after the apostles preached the gospel to us. It was written down in the book of Acts. But over the last 2,000 years, the church has gone through many, many stages of well, I, where the devil has tried to steal the power of the gospel. You know, Jesus promised us that in John chapter uh, 14, verse 12, he says, If you believe, if you believe what I say, you will do what I've been doing and you will do even greater things than these because I go to the Father. So that was a promise that Jesus says, we will be able to do what he has been doing and even greater things than those things that he has done because he has gone to the Father. But we've actually seen a decrease. We've seen how the power of God and what God really intended for his church, for us to be a witness of the gospel's power and the kingdom of God on this earth has decreased. And I believe there's a reason for that. There's a reason. It's like over the years, things have slowly begun to enter into the gospel. Little by little, the gospel was watered down and we, we begin to have a lack of understanding the truth of the gospel. And there's this absolute prophecy here that says, listen, I'm going to raise up the foundations the ancient ruin. So there were things that was ruined over the, the last seven years, or sorry, the last seven church ages over the last 2,000 years. 
We have seen the church systematically being deteriorated until the Dark Ages. And when the Dark Ages came, um, I've got nothing against the Roman Catholic people, but because of the Roman Catholic um, system that came in, basically the gospel was overthrown and people tried to get to God by their own effort. They tried to, to do indulgences and they, they tried to serve God through uh, another mediatrix by the name of Mary. And all those things came in and then God had to begin to restore the gospel back throughout the ages. Then we saw Martin Luther came and when Martin Luther came as a Roman Catholic, he just wanted to really see some things restored. So he, he made his 95 statements and that brought a revolution, that brought a, a reformation that began to turn the church back to the original gospel. But in the process of the last, say, the last thousand years, the church is still restoring. And there's an end time prophecy that I believe that if we read it carefully, it actually says that the gospel must be restored before Jesus will return to the earth. Listen to this verse. In Acts chapter 3 verse 19, and this is also our ministry verse for this ministry that God has called me for, is to restore the gospel back to its original. It says here, uh, verse 19, so repent, Peter is speaking, he says, repent and change your mind and purpose and turn around and return to God that your sins may be erased and blotted out and wiped clean. That times of refreshing, hallelujah, the times of refreshing, of recovering from the effects of heat and of reviving with fresh air may come from the presence of the Lord. You know, I was speaking to the Lord just yesterday and God gave me this very verse and he said to me that I want to bring refreshing to my people. Any gospel, any thing that you believe is the gospel that does not bring refreshing, it's not the gospel because God says, I want to wipe away your sins, I want to cleanse your past, and I want to bring a refreshing to you. Hallelujah. He says, and that he, verse 20, may send you the Christ, the Messiah, who was designated and appointed for you, even Jesus whom heaven must receive and retain until the time of the complete restoration of all that God spoke by the mouth of all the holy prophets for the past ages, from the ancient times in the memory of man. So what he says here is that Jesus has now ascended into heaven and people need to repent. That's 2,000 years ago. The last days have started 2,000 years ago when God began to bring us the New Testament gospel. But he says, listen, Jesus the Christ, who was designated for you, who is Jesus, he must remain in heaven. I love this. You know, I saw a, a vision. I had an experience one day where I saw a, a sign that appeared to me of a man sitting on a horse with a rod in his right hand. And as I looked, I saw that he was holding back this horse very, very hard. And the horse was having a bit and a brittle in his mouth. And it was going like... And I never understood what it meant until God broke open this verse to me. You see, it was the man that's sitting on the, right, on the white horse was Jesus Christ. And he was ready to return. He wanted to come back to, to come and take his people to be where he is. But God showed me that he was holding back the reins of that horse very hard because the Bible says here, whom heaven must receive and retain, hold back, hallelujah, until the time of the complete restoration of all things have taken place that was spoken by the mouth of the prophets. So there's a restoration that's going to take place and it can only take place, Jesus can only return once this has taken place. Hallelujah. Look at this verse. So there's a process of how I believe it's going to take place. And this process is very important if we look at the these last days and what was prophesied by the prophets. So going into this conference, I'm really going to begin to break open what I believe still needs to happen. There's a restoration that needs to take place and how that restoration can possibly take place. 
in Mark 9 verse 11. So what happened here was the disciples were on the mountain with Jesus and they saw Moses and Elijah appeared next to Jesus and Jesus, they saw Jesus in his in his transfigured form, in his glorified form. And they heard a voice speak from heaven that says, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Hallelujah. You know, even as you listen, you can just imagine what they had encountered there. And asked, as they come down that mountain, they asked Jesus a question. And they said, Why do the scribes say that it is necessary for Elijah to come first? And he said to them, Elijah, it is true, does come first to restore all things and to set them right. So there's a lot of controversy around the interpretation of this verse because people say, well, he was referring to, um, to John the Baptist. But if you read it carefully, you will see what he's actually saying. He says, yes, it is true. Elijah does come first. And he says this, not in the past tense, did come first. He says, does come first. And later he says, but Elijah, oh sorry, John the Baptist was that Elijah that was to come. But we're going to look at that in the conference. We're going to see in, in the next few teachings, I'm going to begin to share with you just the way that God spoke to prophets in the Old Testament. And we will see the depth of the scriptures and why we sometimes only see one level of interpretation. It is true, it was, it was John the Baptist that was supposed to come and prepare things for Jesus' first coming. But there was another Elijah that was to come, that was to come and restore all things first before uh, Jesus could return. Hallelujah. In, so why, why Elijah? Well, if we look at 1 Kings 18 from verse 18, um, we just see this, this whole story of where Elijah came in a contest with 400 Baal prophets and 400 prophets of the goddess of Asherah. And so there were nearly over 850 prophets that was prophesying things. And here came Elijah. And Elijah was completely contrary to 850 prophets. That's quite a, a, a radical difference between the two. And so Elijah was a radical prophet who really stood on the truth and God used him. And he made a statement and he says, listen to this in uh, 1 Kings 18 verse 21. Elijah came near to all the people and said, how long will you halt and limp between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. And the people did not answer him. And Elijah said to the people, I only remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450. So Elijah is saying, listen, here's a standard. And I'm setting a standard. If God is the true God, and if the gospel, this is the true gospel, follow the true gospel. And there are many people who are saying many other things, many mixtures of things. And if this Baal is God, then follow him. Let him produce for you. And we know what happened. He called down fire on an altar and the fire burnt up everything on that altar. And it proved that the Lord is God and not the Baal or the Astropoles that they were worshipping. And so God is in these last days going to send us a prophets again that is going to help us to restore the truth back to the gospel. And I'm going to go through a series which I'm going to teach you on the restoration of the gospel after the end time teachings um, in the next three weeks have been done, then I will begin to look at the restoration of the gospel and why I believe the gospel's power has been stolen. So I'm very excited that first there must be an end time restoration of the gospel before Jesus can return. Hallelujah. So everybody's expecting Jesus is going to return right now, very soon. Personally, I say no. The Bible very clear makes it very clear that Jesus must be in heaven. It says here, heaven must retain him until the restoration of all things have taken place. So maybe you never thought about it, but God wants you to not be afraid. He does not want you just to think, well, you're just going to be raptured away or you're going to miss the rapture for that matter. God is going to send us warning before the time and is going to come and restore the gospel. And I believe we are right now 
right now we're in a process. There was a prophecy recently that was given to uh, South Africa where a man prophesied out of America that there's going to be a uh, power that's going to return of a, the man John G. Lake that was in South Africa. And you're going to see how all of that just ties in. And I really believe that that was a true prophecy that is proving that God is restoring the gospel again back and he's going to begin to do something here in Southern Africa and in Africa. And God's called me to help with that restoration. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus, that you will not leave us without support. You did not leave us without support and you will not leave us without support. Father, so right now I pray, Father, I pray that we will all humble ourselves before you, before your word, before your truth, Lord. And we will re research ourselves to see, Father, if the gospel might have been watered down in us. And I pray, Father, even as I speak, that your word will, will open people's hearts to say, maybe, maybe I need to, to go and look. Is my gospel as pure as I think it should be? Father, I pray that you will send us Elijah the prophet. Send us, Father, the spirit of truth that guides us and leads us in all truth in Jesus' name. So that we can know the truth, Father. So that the truth can be restored, Lord. That the gospel can be restored in these last days. Father, before Jesus will return to this earth. Thank you, Lord, that you love us. And that you will not leave us, Lord, without restoring us first. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.